Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about different types of seed starting mixes, what you should choose and what property specifically you're looking for in your seed mix. I can do a separate unboxing video for this. I have not opened it up yet. I actually normally don't buy seed starting mixes. However, since you guys had so many questions about this on my Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube in the comment section, I decided to purchase a mix to see if I can give you a one size fits all answer without you having to do a DIY. But in this video, we'll be going through DIYs all the way to mixes and what you wanna look for on the back of the package. So one of the main things you're looking for in a seed starting mix is actually acidity. And there's a few reasons for this. The number one being is that the more acidic the soil is, the less mold you will have. Because the seed is obviously does not have roots and is not uptaking moisture, mold can happen very quickly in seed germinating setups. The best way to prevent this while still providing the very obvious moisture that the plant needs to germinate is through acidic soil and coconut choir isn't acidic enough but what is acidic enough is peat moss so a peat moss based seed st starter is the number one way to go you can purchase a seed starting mix just make sure it has peat moss as the main ingredient i would say over 70 percent of the mixture should be peat moss the other thing we're looking for is how many fibers are present in the mix. The number one thing we want to see is less fiber. So the finer the mixture, the better. The reason for this is because we don't want giant air pockets in our seed starting mix. The brains behind why this is the case is because seedling roots are very sensitive and if seedlings become exposed to air, in any type of quantity it will actually burn that root off because there is so few roots in seedlings it's in our best interest to preserve the soil and ensure the soil is relatively compact and air free throughout the entire profile the best way to do this is to reduce the fibrous material if you choose to make your own mix using peat moss if you do a 100% peat moss based mix or a partial peat moss based mix, just ensure that the fibrous material is at a minimum. This is the other reason why coconut choir does not work that great for seed starting. It is a little bit too far on the fibrous side. I try to steer away from perlite in seed starting mixes again for that exact same reason of air and minimizing it in the seedling mix. When we put it into our trays, we don't have to really push down and compact it in to reduce the airspace. Just a hard clunk down will be enough compaction to stabilize the roots. Things I absolutely do not recommend when doing a seed starting mix is actually reusing old potting soil. And this goes contrary to what I say on my channel about potting soil and how it is completely okay to reuse. And it is with full grown plants. The reason why I steer away from reusing potting soil in a seed starting setup actually has to do with the fact that there could be seeds in that potting soil mix. Now those seeds could be weeds or those seeds could be viable plants that you may want to grow. However, they could have alleopathic properties to them. That means that you may suppress your seedlings and you will not get good germination rates. To prevent this and make sure you don't run into this issue, try to not reuse potting soil for seed starting. Another thing that you want to steer away from is any sort of crazy garden hack. Don't germinate in eggshells, especially if you are not putting a hole in the bottom to allow for drainage. Don't be putting in coffee grounds. Don't be putting in banana peels, nothing like that. Again, you may stress out the seed and you may prevent germination. Seeds are arguably more sensitive than plants in some ways. And it 
all goes back to that seed not wanting to germinate unless it's under the absolute ideal situation. This is a protection method for the seedling to ensure future generations of the plant. Another type of seed starting mix that I do enjoy using and that I will use especially for my smaller seeds or for my flowers that need a little bit more heat when it comes to germination is actually straight vermiculite. Vermiculite, I'll insert a photo here, check out my video on that, but it works really great for any type of flower or plant that needs a little bit of bottom heat to it or has a very tiny seeds. The reason for that is because it is a great balance for air circulation. So you don't end up with rot. And because the seeds are so tiny, rotting doesn't take much to completely disengage that seed altogether. That is why I like to use vermiculite in that case. It also has a whole heat holding capacity that is ideal to me. Um, it heats very evenly, whereas peat moss that has been packed into a cell may not. Besides using actual uh, seed starting mix, some people hate these, but I do enjoy them and I'd use them all the time, is the peat moss pods. And these little discs in here, you can buy them separate. If you have the kits, like the bottom portion, you can just buy the pods or you can just buy the pods. And you can get big ones, like relatively large discs that would take you all the way to outdoor transplant time. Or you can get smaller ones, which you may have to transplant in between, depending on what plants you're using. I can show, I can do a live actually, showing you me potting these up or planting these up. But I'm a huge fan of these. There is no vermiculite, there's no perlite. It is pure peat moss. And I find them excellent at suppressing that mold. I don't end up with seed rot and I usually have germination throughout the entire seed block. Be sure to grab the 2021 garden planner that I put together. We'll start filling that in probably in February um, and then also if you guys want seeds and you want Canadian seeds be sure to check out the Zappa link down below. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and if you have any other questions about seed starting soil mixes then please put them in the comments down below. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!